Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we have some more super fun thrift flips. But before we get started, I wanna give a big thank you to Vivor. They have sent me over a power washer that is about to make my life so much easier. Y'all know I love rusty, crusty farmhouse junk, but sometimes I do need to clean it up a little bit. Let's get this guy opened up and check it out. This high pressure washer was very easy to assemble. The instructions came with the box. I took everything out and laid them out. Once I have everything assembled, I'm going to take it outside and work on some enamel pieces that I got at a garage sale. They are super dirty, so this will be perfect. This little power washer is portable for multi-use purposes, cleaning the yard, the vehicles, your patio, you name it. It's 2000 PSI, 1.76 GPM, and it comes with a 30 foot hose, so it will extend far enough for any of your projects. There are five quick connectors that come with the machine. They're easy to change out and they adjust your spray nozzle. So you can get a more specific spray pattern for those tough jobs. I will be sure to link this pressure washer down in the description box below and you can save 5% with my code VIVERSALE5. I'll drop that down below for you just in case you forget. And I also wanted to let y'all know I am running a sale on these enamel pieces. Yes, if you're watching this video today, July 17th, 2023, my sale runs until midnight, 11.59 p.m. Central Standard Time. That's 40% off of my thrifted, found, and upcycled items. It is a moving sale, y'all. If you haven't heard the news, go check out my lifestyle channel and you can hear all about my next big move. First project today is this vintage recipe box. It is super cute, but the apples do fade it a little bit. So I'm going to use my orbital sander, 220 grit sandpaper, get these apples sanded down, and then we're going to give it a bit of a paint job. I began by sanding this down. I have 220 grit sandpaper on my orbital sander, and I wasn't too worried about a perfect sanding pattern because I knew I was going to paint over this part, but I did want to remove the image and the words so it didn't show through my paint design. Once back inside, I wiped the whole thing down with a little bit of uh, dish soap and warm water just in case it had any residue left from being a kitchen piece. And then I'm going in with my one step paint. This is DIY cottage color in white linen. It's an all in one paint. It has a built in sealer, so there will be no need to seal it before I move on to my stencil. You can see on the right there after one coat is still a bit streaky. So I went ahead and did two full coats. Once it was dry, I have grabbed out my Valentine stencils by JRB. I can drop these down in the description box for you, but it had some really fun words on it that I thought would be very appropriate for the kitchen. Now my stencil didn't fit perfectly, so you'll see me pick it up and move it around, and that's just to get the design to fit. Don't forget y'all, you can move your stencils around, mix and match them, and get some very unique designs. You don't have to use them exactly as they are. Now to get the crispest image possible, I am taking my JRB 3 8 inch stencil brush, dipping it in some DIY hay sailor, and then I'm offloading most of that paint onto a paper towel using a very, very dry brush. Using a light hand and a swirling method, I am going over my stencil and all of the areas where I would like it to get this beautiful, one-of-a-kind design. I do want this piece to look aged, so I am distressing it with some 220 grit sandpaper. I grabbed my DIY white wax and I am just doing a little bit of a waxing over the entire piece. It's going to freshen up the wood on the sides, but notice how it sat down beautifully in the wood grain on the very edge pieces just bringing this whole entire piece together drop me a comment below let me know what you think of this first makeover to find any of the paint products or the flips i did today you can head over to my website upcycledbybree.com i'll be sure to drop all of the links you need including the power washer and my junk down in the description box below. Project two is going to be a bit of a unique cloche makeover. So I got these glass pieces. I think they were from old ceiling fans or lamps. 
and I took two little round bases. I pulled these off of some Christmas trees around Christmas time for a DIY project. I wanted to put the trees somewhere else. And then the little wooden pieces were actually corn cob holders. I took the poker out and drilled a hole down into them. These two pieces will create a finial top. I'm putting a wood screw through the wood round and using my Starbond gap filler thick glue, I am going to get this attached. So I'm putting my gap filler glue on the metal and spraying the accelerator onto the wood round per the instructions. That instantly dries and now I'm using the gap filler around any excess space between the wood and the metal. I spray that with the accelerator again and it dries almost instantly. I will link this glue down below in my Amazon shop if you'd like to try it out. I did tape the pieces down just to make sure everything dried securely in place and then use some Windex to clean up the glass. Once everything's dry I'm going in with DIY black velvet paint to make this look a little more aesthetically pleasing. I paint the top and bottom of that wood round. DIY Aviary is my color choice for the wooden knobs. The customer who purchased these cloches actually purchased black velvet and aviary in their order. So I thought it would be fun to use the colors in case they were painting their own pieces and they wanted to incorporate it into the decor. I simply screwed that wooden piece onto my wood round with the screw in it and let that dry as well. Taking some DIY black wax, I am finishing up, sealing up these little square bases for the bottom. I also painted them in DIY black velvet. I also used a little bit of the black wax to seal up the black wooden round and to accentuate the aviary see it sitting down there in the creases. So this is a little bit of a different cloche makeover than I usually do. Drop me a comment down below. Let me know what you think of them. Someone told me they thought they looked kind of like bells. For project three, I'm using DIY Sandy Blonde and this beautiful deer decor transfer by Redesign with Prima. This board is still in good shape, so I decided only to paint one side and the edges. That way the other side could still be used in the kitchen if they would so choose. I cut out the part of the transfer that I'd like to use and peeled off the paper backing. Then you apply it to your project exactly where you want it. Once you put it down, don't pick it back up or you will mess up the design. Now I'm using the enclosed rubbing tool and starting to rub over the plastic on this transfer. That's going to make the image adhere to my project and have it start peeling off of that plastic backing. Now I will be honest, I went right over the paint as soon as it was dry. You should let it cure overnight for better adhesion. So I had just a little bit of trouble getting this transfer off, but really it wasn't bad at all. I literally just dried this paint when I put it on. And now I'm using some 320 grit sandpaper to distress the image ever so lightly. I believe this transfer is going to be perfect for fall and winter and I have plenty in stock in my Redesign with Prima collection. Next up, I'm going to seal this piece up using the Sweet Pickens Tongue Oil. This is a super heavy duty, food safe top coat. Now, technically the DIY paint is not food safe, but it is going to seal up my paint and I'm also going to use it on the raw wood of the other side. Since the hemp oil, I'm sorry, since the tongue oil is food safe, you will still be able to use this as a cutting board. And for the last project is a super quick flip. I love buying these little metal decor pieces. These were $2.50 each, but sometimes they really lose their detail with all the darkness. So I like to paint them up a brighter color today. I'm using DIY Mint Chip and giving them one nice thick coat. Once they're dry, I do a technique called wet distressing. So easy. I just grab a nice wet rag and rub over the 
elevated details, which is going to reveal that original color. To seal everything up, I give it a coat of DIY white wax, which will also sit down very nicely in the low points, giving it even more of a distressed finish. I just love how bright and light these pieces are. Drop me a comment down below and let me know what you think about this quick flip and which project of today's is your favorite. If y'all love these thrift flip videos, be sure to give me a thumbs up if you haven't yet, subscribe and follow so you don't miss any new content. And if you don't mind, send this video over to a friend that's gonna help my channels continue to grow. Till next time, I'll see y'all later. Bye friends.